This is Earth, 335 million years ago. I wasn't around then, but there's just one supercontinent, Pangaea. See? Let's watch it shift around and fast forward. Okay, here we go. It just split into two huge pieces. Australia goes this way, North and South America go that way. Africa, Asia, Europe, forming, forming, and there we go. The planet as it is today. Let's keep going. I mean, the continents are always on the move. Over time, some of them will crash into each other. Others will break apart. But that'll take about 100 million years. Better put it on super fast forward. 100 years from now, humans keep spitting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and the planet's already warmed up a bunch. The world's ocean levels have risen about 4 feet. The Bahamas? They've totally disappeared. 200 years from now, the Earth's population is about 19 billion people. The climate's gotten even warmer. We're packed in like sardines over here. New medical tech makes it possible to live to 180. But why? Fossil fuel reserves of oil and gas? Long gone. Oh, and the continents have drifted over 16 feet. The Voyager 1 space probe's about to enter an asteroid cloud at the edge of the solar system. It's the most distant man-made object in the universe, I guess. A thousand years from now, thanks to better quality food, humans are now 7 feet tall on average. Technology solved the pollution and fuel shortage problem. Humanity's doing just fine. Robots do all the work, we just play around all day. Ocean levels have crept up another 10 feet. Islands like the Seychelles, Maldives, Galapagos, and many others have gone underwater. Denmark, the Netherlands, Eastern England, Thailand, and Vietnam are only partially underwater. There's been a huge human migration these last hundred years. Fast forward about 5,000 more years, and it's the year 8113. Humanity's getting ready to open the crypt of civilization. It's a hermetically sealed room in Georgia, in the States. That Georgia. It was created in 1940, and it's full of about 800 books on microfilm, recordings of famous people's voices. It's also filled with bits of technology from that time, like a toaster, a radio, and a typewriter. Some awesome people created the crypt of civilization in case humans experienced a major catastrophe in the distant future and had to rebuild civilization from scratch. We'd all go back to using typewriters. 15,000 years from now, our planet has changed its tilt, and the Sahara Desert is now a tropical paradise. Years of rain turned the dry desert into a wild jungle. 30,000 years from now, the Voyager 1 space probe has finally left the asteroid cloud at the edge of our solar system. If it doesn't collide with anything, it'll be flying in the dark, wide-open outer space for a very long time. 50,000 years from now, the climate's changing a lot. The temperature on Earth is beginning to drop, and we are approaching the beginning of a new ice age. The radio signal with a special, hello all you aliens out there, message sent into space in 1974 has reached its destination. The message contained the human number system and data about our DNA and our solar system. If there was someone on the other end to receive this signal, we might have a response from them. 100,000 years from now, one of the largest known stars in our galaxy, Canis Majoris, explodes with enormous force. The explosion of this supernova can be seen from Earth, even during the day. And the nights are much brighter because of the new strong glow in the night sky. What's new on Earth? Super volcanoes start erupting all over. These volcanoes spew colossal amounts of lava and ash everywhere. Thick black clouds cover most of the sky. This prevents the sun's rays from reaching the ground, and the temperature on our planet drops even lower. Humans mostly live underground anyway, so it's no big deal. Because the stars are gradually moving in different directions, the usual constellations are starting to change shape. Soon, we'll need to come up with totally new constellation names. 250 years from now. Oh, a new island's on the map. Back in 2021, it was just an underwater volcano somewhere in the Pacific. After thousands of years of spouting out lava, it finally reached the ocean surface and busted out in the cool, fresh air. Not much growing on it yet. 
Niagara Falls has long since disappeared, and Lake Erie and Lake Ontario have teamed up to form one huge super lake. 300,000 years from now, the triple star system WR104 is about to explode. It's spinning crazy fast, and there's a chance that radiation from the explosion could eventually reach Earth. That would do a lot of damage to all life on our planet. Voyager 1 reaches the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius. Not a very funny star at all, it's really Sirius. It's 8.6 light years from Earth. 500,000 years from now, scientists are pretty sure that a huge meteorite could fall to Earth any day now. It might be even the size of 8 football fields. The impact of such a massive meteorite would cause an explosion so powerful that its sound would be heard on every continent. That would be followed by super strong earthquakes and tsunamis higher than the Brightside Empire Municipal Building Tower thingy. Okay, I just made that up, but who knows what we'll be building in the future. One million years from now, the rogue star Gliese 710 comes very close to our solar system. We're surrounded by a huge shield of asteroids called the Oort Cloud, and the rogue star is beginning to affect the asteroids hanging out in there. It grabs them, spins them around, and throws them toward the center of our solar system. Comets start to fall on our planet all the time, big ones, causing more tsunamis and earthquakes. 10 million years from now, the Red Sea is gradually expanding into the East African Rift. Africa is now divided in two by a new oceanic gulf. The human DNA molecule has completely decomposed. But it's no big deal. We've become totally digital, without any pesky aging problems. The really cool thing is that other animals have evolved a lot and changed ridiculously. Thanks to a simple interface, we're actually able to talk to dolphins, chimps, dogs, and cats. Turns out cats aren't grumpy, they're just busy contemplating life. 25 million years from now, the San Andreas Fault has been crazy recently and has caused the Gulf of California to flood the Central Valley. There's a new sea on the west coast of North America. 50 million years from now, Africa just collided with Eurasia. The Mediterranean Sea is totally gone. There's a new tallest mountain in the world. Its name? Mount Everest, of course. Australia is continuing its journey north. It already collided with Southeast Asia a few million years ago. The few human colonies still left on Mars need to do some serious packing. Phobos, one of Mars' moons, is beginning to orbit at a lower and lower altitude. That's not good. It's about 14 miles wide, so that's going to be unpleasant. 60 million years from now, the Canadian Rocky Mountains have completely eroded. It's just one gigantic flat plain. 80 million years from now, all the remains of Hawaii is one island. All the others have long since gone underwater. But just next door, a whole new chain of Hawaiian islands has emerged. Finally, 100 million years from now, we made it! The Atlantic shrinking down to nothing. The Americas are almost rubbing up against Africa. Africa's already merged with Eurasia. We've got ourselves a supercontinent again. Hello, Pangaea Proxima. All traces of human life are gone or buried deep underground. The movement of the continents has destroyed tunnels, roads, buildings, bridges. Animals and plants now reign supreme on Earth. So, where are all the humans? Well, remember we made the jump to digital about 90 million years ago? Things are still going strong. There are trillions of human minds living on a huge hard drive on a spaceship orbiting Earth. The super low space temperature is good for keeping the drive nice and cool. We have millions of different societies, languages, and cultures just like we had 100 million years ago. The only difference? We're all little ones and zeros in a huge digital universe that we created. And yes, there's still football. Traveling back in time now? Hmm, this used to be hard. We fly past the Middle Ages, the first human civilization, the ancient ancestors of the first humans, the dinosaurs, the first land animals, the ancient sea creatures, and so on to the very beginning of all time. And there it is! This nebula is our solar system. Right now, it's just a cloud of multicolored dust made of hydrogen and helium spinning around. This cloud has begun to shrink and become denser. There's a theory that there were supernova explosions near our nebula. 
Their shockwaves squeezed the nebula from different sides until the center of the cloud became too heavy. The enormous weight presses it, and nuclear chain reactions begin at the very center of this cloud. It heats the cloud and makes it glow. Soon it forms into a dense sphere, and that's how our Sun is born. It happened about 4.5 billion years ago. Our planet doesn't exist yet. There's only a disk of dust and space debris orbiting the young Sun. These pieces of debris are fusing gradually and getting heavier and heavier. Let's look at the very center of this pile of asteroids. The total weight of the debris compresses the central region so much that a dense metallic core is forming there. The enormous pressure heats the core, and the temperature at the center of the young Earth reaches nearly 10,800 degrees. And there's a liquid core around the solid one. It creates the magnetic field of our planet. Now, when radiation from the sun and the solar wind reaches Earth, it smashes into a shield in the form of our magnetic field. So far, our planet is burning and looks more like a ball of lava. But it begins to cool down, forming a solid crust. At this point, another protoplanet appears on the horizon. It looks more like an asteroid the size of Mars. And this massive piece of debris flies towards us. It hits the young Earth at such an angle that it knocks a part of our planet outward. The debris itself breaks into several pieces and stops in our orbit. After a while, all of this debris comes together to form the Moon. As a result of this collision, the Earth began rotating too fast. A day now lasts about 5 hours, instead of the usual 24. But the Moon is heavy enough to slow our planet's rotation with gravity. Now, the Earth doesn't look like a hospitable place. The gravitational forces of the Moon are penetrating deep into the Earth and causing more volcanic activity. Also, meteorites are constantly falling here, causing frequent explosions on the surface. Ow! The gas that comes out of the volcanoes forms our atmosphere. The ice that was brought to our planet on meteorites evaporates. The vapor rises and turns into rain. This rainwater falls to the surface, cooling the hot lava and forming the first lakes and rivers. For several hundred million more years, Earth resembles the surface of Venus. It's a lifeless place with a bunch of volcanoes, acid rains, and no oxygen to breathe. The sun wasn't as bright as it is now. Plus, the sun's rays could barely pass through tons of volcanic dust in the atmosphere. But about 3.5 billion years ago, the first life appears here in the form of single-celled organisms that didn't need oxygen. They appeared in the shallow, warm parts of the ocean near the shore. These bacteria reigned on Earth for nearly 2 billion years throughout the Archean Eon. They left stromatolites. These are stone pillars at the bottom of shallow warm water. They're the product of simple organisms and bacteria. These bacteria evolved until they learned photosynthesis. Bacteria began to produce oxygen by absorbing the energy of sunlight. At first, this oxygen was spent on oxidizing rocks, but then excess oxygen began to fill the atmosphere. Plus, at this time, the first algae appeared, which also produced oxygen. This event is called the Great Oxidation Event, good name, which caused almost all living organisms to disappear from the face of the Earth. For simple organisms, oxygen was toxic, and the remains of bacteria and microorganisms sank to the bottom of the ocean. Many millions of years later, these remains will be recycled, and under the tremendous pressure of water and the Earth's crust, they will turn into oil. The Archean Eon ended with this catastrophe about 2.5 billion years ago. At the same time, continents were forming on Earth, which would later drift through the world's oceans like puzzles and form a supercontinent. But for now, methane and carbon dioxide still make up most of the atmosphere. They cause the greenhouse effect and the rising temperatures on Earth. But the emergence of oxygen stops the greenhouse effect, and the temperature on our planet drops. An ice age, the so-called Huronian glaciation, which lasted from 2.4 to 2.1 billion years ago, begins. Scientists speculate that our planet was almost completely covered in ice at that time, even on the hot equator. A huge change when you consider that 2 billion years ago, our planet was like a ball and lava, but now it's like a block of ice. Earth, during the Huronian glaciation, was more like Jupiter's satellite Europa. There, too, is a thick crust of ice, under which there's a liquid ocean heated by the core. The evolution of the Sun saved our planet. Since its birth 4.5 billion years ago, it's been getting bigger and hotter. So, after 300 million years of an ice age, the Earth began to warm up. But almost all life there had been wiped out, and evolution has to start all over again. 
About 1 billion years ago, all of the continents of our planet were assembled into one hypothesized supercontinent, Rodinia. And all the oceans made up one colossal ocean of Muravia. 750 million years ago, that continent broke apart and huge chunks of land began drifting across the planet. Complex plants and multicellular organisms appeared just at this time. Algae, sponges, and fungi weren't the only inhabitants of the ocean. This is Sprigina. They're a kind of worms the size of a human finger. We have remains of these animals that are at least about 550 million years old. 541 million years ago, the Phanerozoic Eon began. The main event at that time is the Cambrian Explosion. Life began to blossom on Earth, and a great variety of living organisms appeared. Mollusks and echinoderms like starfish and sea urchins appeared. Living organisms evolved, having not only an internal but also an external skeleton, like trilobites. Some of these things could reach nearly 3 feet in length. Their protective shells suggest that there were predators in the ocean. A food chain started forming at that time. At the same moment, the drifting continents fused again. This supercontinent has a different shape and is called Panosia. Later, these continents drifted apart again and began to collide with each other. This led to the formation of mountain ranges. Then the continents met for the last time and formed the giant supercontinent Pangaea about 335 million years ago. Here we can already see the outline of the modern continents of Africa, North and South America, Australia, and Eurasia. One of the largest sea creatures ever, the Dunkleosaurus, appeared. Some individuals could be as long as a school bus and weigh as much as a large SUV. The land had a hot and humid climate. It encouraged ferns and other plants to grow faster. Some of them could reach the height of a three-story building. And for the first time in Earth's history, some animals leave the ocean and go on lands, such as El Genirpeton and Ichthyostega. Anyway, at first, they live only on the coast because their skin wasn't adapted to the constant sunlight. In addition, they experience breathing problems. The first animals on land had both gills and lungs, but the lungs were underdeveloped, so they had to return to the water. Millions of years later, these animals evolved into more advanced amphibians. Though they were no bigger than ordinary lizards, they could already live fully on land. But this blossoming of life ended in a new ice age. Glaciers from the poles slowly crept toward the equator. Animals weren't prepared for this, and most of them didn't survive this extinction event. But 290 million years ago, evolution retook hold and more evolved land animals began to appear. Gradually, they increased in size, multiplied, and gave birth to a new species like Scutosaurus and Gorgonopsis. But this period didn't last long either. Only 40 million years later, as a result of unknown events, 95% of all living organisms on Earth ceased to exist. It could have been caused by a giant meteorite or by increased volcanic activity. Also, one hypothesis says it could have been the release of methane from the bottom of the ocean. The Mesozoic era began after this extinction. This is where the dinosaurs as we know them appeared and started a new page in Earth's history. Our good old solar system is actually a pretty bizarre place, what with all its out-of-this-world phenomena that we humans haven't managed to explain yet. There are rumors that a gigantic, undiscovered planet is hiding behind Neptune. Volcanoes on Pluto spew ice, and a colossal canyon on Mars can accommodate the whole U.S. territory and most of Cleveland. Well, let's figure out if it's true by talking about the most mystifying solar system facts. The solar system is 4.6 billion years old. So old, it's a senior solar system. Scientists came to this conclusion after they studied the oldest material they managed to get a hold of. And by that, I mean meteorites, of course. You won't be able to wear a hat on Venus, ever, and just try to stand on your feet. The planet is insanely windy. Its upper winds blow 50 times faster than the planet rotates. What's more, these fierce winds never stop and can get even stronger with time. Want to get away? You'll have to travel 11 billion miles away from Earth before ever leaving the solar system. Take your Google Maps with you. You probably heard of methane gas, a byproduct of natural processes such as volcanic activity and cows. Anyway, this gas is not only a part of the Martian atmosphere, but also the thing that confuses astronomers to no end. 
The thing is that the volume of methane on Mars keeps wavering, and scientists just can't figure out where it might be coming from. Can there be cows on Mars? As you may remember, Pluto used to be a planet but was stripped of this title in 2006. Later, it was reclassified as a dwarf planet. Gee, make up your mind! But the most unexpected fact about this celestial body is that its diameter is smaller than that of the US. See for yourself. The greatest distance across the country, from Maine to Northern California, is about 2,800 miles. As for Pluto, it's only 1,473 miles across. The planet Uranus, or Uranus, you can't win either way, rotates on its side, and astronomers have no idea why the planet has chosen such an unusual position. The culprits could be ancient mega-powerful collisions, but so far it's just a theory. By the way, this is the only planet laying on its side. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? Well, 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is in the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Earth might not be the only tectonically active planet in the solar system. Astronomers have spotted some landforms looking like cliffs on Mercury. If it's so, the tectonic activity could explain the rapid shrinking of the planet. In most sci-fi movies about space, the main character gets into an asteroid belt and must dodge countless rocks that threaten to damage their spacecraft. Well, sorry to disappoint, but that's nothing like the real thing. The only asteroid belt astronomers know about is located between Mars and Jupiter. There are thousands of asteroids in this region, but they're so widely spaced that the chance of collision is next to nothing. Ah, you just ruined it. Sorry. Behind the orbit of Neptune lies the mysterious Kuiper Belt, filled with massive icy objects. The most curious thing about this space formation, though, is that scientists can't explain the pattern of its movement. The only explanation they have is that Neptune might be hiding a ginormous planet from our sight. This hypothetical planet has already got the name Planet 9, and all we have to do is wait until its existence is confirmed. Or not. Volcanoes on Earth are as different from those on Pluto as fire and ice. And I mean it. While we have volcanoes spilling lava on our planet, the volcanoes on Pluto spit ice. When frozen water expands, and this enormous pressure builds up until one day, bang, the ice erupts. In the process, a new cryovolcano gets formed. One of Saturn's moons, Lapidus, has a unique color. It's two-toned. One of its hemispheres is light and the other is eerily dark. Scientists haven't figured out this mystery yet. There's another weird thing about Pluto, or rather, about its atmosphere. First, it rises way higher above the surface of the dwarf planet than, for example, the Earth's atmosphere. What's more, the atmosphere on Pluto has more than 20 layers, and all of them are super cold and very condensed. We live inside the Sun. No, I don't mean that we're inhabitants of the red-hot ball of light approximately 93 million miles away. The thing is that the Sun's atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface. And our planet is right within its reach. In fact, it's the gusts of solar wind that create the breathtaking phenomenon known as the northern and southern lights. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other on the rest of the solar system's planets. But wait! It's not the type of ocean you're thinking about. The one on Jupiter isn't made of water. This mesmerizing thing consists of metallic hydrogen, and its depth is a staggering 25,000 miles, which is almost the same as the circumference of the Earth. The Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. While on the surface, the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Scientists suspect that explosive bursts of heat from the Sun may have something to do with this unique phenomenon. People came to know about Saturn's beautiful rings in the 1600s. But only recently, it became apparent that Saturn isn't the only ringed planet. All the gas giant planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter, have rings of their own, 
but they're thin and almost impossible to see. As for Mars, Venus, and Earth, they're made of rocky materials and have no rings whatsoever. Our solar system isn't the only one in the Milky Way galaxy. Far from it. The galaxy we live in houses about 100 billion solar systems. And if that's just our galaxy alone, can you imagine how many there are in the whole universe? At any given moment here on Earth, you can stumble across a rock that's arrived from Mars. After scientists analyzed the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places on our planet, they came to the shocking conclusion that they have a Martian origin. Since Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, many people simply assume that it's also the hottest. And that's where they get it wrong, because, in fact, Venus, which is about 30 million miles further from the Sun than Mercury, is way hotter. The thing is that Venus has an incredibly thick atmosphere, which is 100 times denser than the one we have on Earth. On top of that, this atmosphere consists almost entirely of carbon dioxide, also known as a greenhouse gas. These factors make the temperatures on the planet rise to a staggering 875 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt lead. As for Mercury, its maximum temperatures reach only 800 degrees. Jupiter's moon, Io, exists in never-ending chaos due to hundreds of smoking volcanoes on its surface. If you ever visit this place, send me a postcard. Now, you'll see the smoke from these volcanoes billowing up high into Lowe's atmosphere. The most enormous volcano in the whole solar system, at least that we know of, is on Mars. The size of this monster is almost as great as the state of Arizona, and its height is as big as that of Mount Everest. How did it grow this huge? The answer is simple. There's much less gravity on Mars in comparison with our planet. Even if you're a tiny celestial body, you can still have a moon of your own. Hey, it's not that hard. In 1993, the Galileo probe was traveling past a miniature asteroid that was no bigger than 20 miles across and discovered the little thing had a one-mile-wide moon. Since then, astronomers have found tons of moons orbiting minor planets in our solar system. The valley called Valles Marineris on Mars is more than 10 times larger than Earth's Grand Canyon. And it's another thing that puzzles astronomers. After all, Mars isn't a planet with active plate tectonics. On the surface of Jupiter, there's a weird region that's called the Great Red Spot. Recently, astronomers have concluded that this spot is actually a storm that's been raging on the planet for centuries. But some 20 years ago, scientists noticed that the red region started to shrink. Nowadays, it's just half the size it used to be. And still, the spot is one and a half times bigger than Earth. How about you? Do you know any other unusual facts about our solar system that I've missed? Then let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go space traveling just yet! We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life!